Good morning folks, welcome along to the vlog on what has turned out to be a real washout of a day. Fortunately, we've got the shelter of a rickety old asbestos roof to keep us dry for the majority of the day. We still have a leak or two though, but nothing too serious. So a couple of things I'm going to be doing today. Uh, one of them, at some point, I'll be wrapping up some of the soap that I've made over the past few months. Mango, lemon, cherry berry, coconut, all sorts of really, really nice cosmetics there. I was looking at selling these, but apparently you need a, um, a certificate of conformity, if you like, for every single recipe, which costs big bucks for the sake of selling a few soaps for a pound here or there. So that's something we're going to put on hold for a while, although it does mean we can make as much as we like and give it away. Uh, I'm also going to be taking a reading of the beers that we made last week and we now have all five of these fermenters. I know this has been going on a long time. They're all insulated and functioning. We only have one left that is going to require descaling. I'll show you what it looks like on the inside. So if we come across to tank number five, we can see that he looks pretty, pretty neat in there few spots from where I've done some welding repairs but certainly um, no line scale and nothing to worry about beautiful beautiful stainless just needs a caustic and an acid treatment ready for beer and there's the dip tube by the way whereas this is the only one that hasn't had that treatment and as you can see it looks like it's been storing cement it hasn't of course this is beer stone and if you had stainless steel tanks at home with hard water it's something you may be familiar with we don't have hard water in retford we're quite fortunate it's somewhere in the middle you get a bit of lime scale in your kettle maybe after 18 months but nothing to worry about so we're just going to give this boy a um, treatment with something called nitrosid and uh, that's something that we can recirculate around the tank via a spray ball and it'll fetch all of this off and at the same time it will repassivate the stainless and give it its, uh, its corrosive resistance properties back. So that's another job we're going to do today. We'll be setting the... Uh, I've just got to navigate the stairs, I've got rubbish on the stairs. We've, we'll be setting up the uh, spray ball and the research pump on there to give it a good clean. I also want to break down the entire boil kettle, take everything off it, because I would like to use it again tomorrow to brew some more beer. So that's another job. I also want to commission the pilot kit and make a plum porter. So that will be a separate video when I do that, of course. Uh, I've just got one probe on the mash tun to take out and calibrate and then we can use the whole thing and I do have the PT100 probe so we're gonna get that in at some time as well today. A little bit of housekeeping, some stuff to put away and some kegs which have now finished carbonating to be put into the cold room and yes I should be carbonating those kegs in the cold room it's just I don't have the pipe work set up in there at the moment. So that's another job also for another day. So stick around. We'll come back in periodically when we start knocking these jobs on the head. Oh, I've just noticed Gemma's done us a wonderful job of cleaning casks ready for filling early next week. So that's one job off the list already. Uh, but yeah, we'll check in periodically throughout the day as, as we start to tick all of these jobs off the list. So one of the tasks you may recall is uh, from last week, and that is to turn this old uh, scales control box into a control panel 
for the pilot kit so we can house the STC-1000s in here and uh, there'll be room for expansion as well. I'm sure we can fit kind of three, six, nine, nine little fermenters in there if we wanted to, although we don't need to yet. But in order to do that, we need to make a new face plate because this one has obviously got the cutouts for the old panel. Fortunately for us, it is designed to take a new face plate as well. So I have some stainless steel which I'll be fetching in at the in the minute, in the minute, in a moment. Yes. And what I'll be doing is uh, cutting out one of these, drilling the holes, and then of course cutting out the uh, areas where we're going to install the STC 1000s. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, we'll get wiring them up so we can start to use that pilot kit sometime this week maybe and get that plumb porter started because I'm keen on doing that and I'm sure a lot of you guys out there would like to be able to replicate something along the lines of Titanic's plumb porter that's what we're gonna shoot for a little bit of a clone if you like and uh, mainly because I have a Marjorie seedling plum tree in the back garden and she's a laden so we want to utilize those plums First in a test batch, and then if that is successful, we'll scale it up onto the big kit, of course. But of course, first, we need to fit this bad boy out. So here we have a cutout, actually. This would have been one of the segments that we removed from a steel circle, uh, which would have made up the cone for the base of one of the fermenters that we fabricated back in early 2018 and fortunately we can just about get this steel out of it with a few millimeters to spare so I'm going to go ahead clean this up draw around it and then we're going to cut it out simply with a slitting disc I'm not going to get the plasma cutter out for this because it leaves a raggedy edge as you can see from earlier attacks and then uh, we'll also cut out the STC positions on here
So I may have skipped one or two steps on the time lapse there a little bit, I suppose. But we now have a control panel for four fermenters so far. Uh, one thing to note though is that um, I don't have all of the relays to complete the wiring so we've just installed enough cable to power just kind of one fermenter that's what these three relays are going to do here I'm hoping we can run it all off one power supply as well this power supply is going to actuate the mechanized motorized valves which will control the flow into the fermenters with the glycol the pump can just be daisy chained to all the other um, relays when they arrive the valve will have to be separate for each STC as will the pump actually and the heat so we're gonna have uh, another um, 369 relays to install but we'll just be able to kind of daisy chain off the main supply and then of course the load will all go to where it's required as it comes out of the other side this is for the thermoprobes which I've uh, got over here with all their associated dangly bobs kind of connected if you like and this whole thing now is ready to go on the wall where we'll at the end of this cable here install one of these sockets which means it will plug straight into the existing cooling matrix and fingers crossed power straight up so yeah in terms of this power supply I think I just glossed over that that's uh, only operating those motorized valves so 1.2 amps should be enough because it's not going to be operating all the time it's just to turn the valve and then stop so fingers crossed I'm not going to need that ID plate on there anymore because that's not for this panel so we'll just sort that out and then there's also a little bit of insulating foam to go in here so it makes a splash proof maybe not waterproof but splash proof seal at worst and then we can kind of stick it on the wall and see if we can get it to uh, get it to come to life okay well I've had to run a cable out to this section here FV3 because this is where we've got the spare robust swift connector for us to join up with but before I plug that in, I'm going to set you up on the control panel itself so you'll see it illuminate. I've already had this plugged in, so I know what's going to happen. I just found it really quite funny. It reminded me of a meme that I saw on Facebook or YouTube a long time ago where this guy presses a great big basket full of rubber chickens. You'll see what I mean. I know it's not the same, but it did kind of remind me of it. So this is obviously the uh, alarms for the probes, because the probes aren't in there, of course. But we've got the connectors underneath to put them in, just under here. So what I'm going to do is uh, we'll go and fetch them in a minute when we know where exactly they want to be. But in the meantime, while they're sat here doing nothing, you can just press the power button to silence that alarm and they can just sit there like that until we actually want to plug that particular probe in. Or maybe I'll just have the probes kind of coiled up and just, you know, sat on the top of the unit. We'll see. But yeah, that's, uh, that's in. And it looks to me like that's a good position for it. So we're going to have the... Um, the motorized valves we'll stick them on the wall over here somewhere like this so they can communicate quite easily with the panel and then uh, the probes will come round I think I've explained this before to meet the fermenters and we'll be plugging them in like this with just a little bit of pipe in between and then that'll go off to the distribution manifold and then all of these fermenters then will be able to be individually controlled and looking at that 
I think we've definitely got room for four fermenters up there at the very least. So we can we can get experimenting with the kit. Friggin' right. So I've managed to make like a little bit of a mount on the side there, look, to stick all these motorised valves. And uh, that should actually have opened now. No, no open. Ah, I see what the problem is. The uh, transformer doesn't like it, the 12 volt transformer, so we're going to have to investigate that, I think. Hello, sir. Hey, Perfect yeah. timing. Howdy doody. Been a long time no see on the video. Hello, I boys and girls. It has been a long time since anybody's seen me on video. Yeah, he's still alive. I am still alive. Just, only just mine. I don't know, drinking this though, mate, it might uh, put you six feet under. You know, my brewing and all that. <laughs> well, at least I'll be happy. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Always nice to see Froggy. I've just been up to the bar, had a part of vacant with him and whatnot, and shot the breeze for a little bit. Uh, but just before he arrived, actually, I was talking about the fact that um, there was a little bit of buzzing going on in the 12 volt power supply, and it turns out that when I soldered these cables onto the motorised valve the traces on those valves are so tight together that uh, to solder any extra wire on there, the wire was that big it was bridging onto another trace and it effectively shorted the cable out which meant that the power supply unit didn't like it and they shut down. So that was the issue but we've bypassed that so we've popped this one in place instead, number two, and number two will run as number one until we get some new motorised valves in situ uh, to take up the slack. I've got some on order from China, but they take a long time uh, to arrive. The alternative is paying two or three times as much from somewhere like Screwfix for basically the same product, which is not something I'm going to do, because you know how tight I am, folks. Anyway. Uh, this control panel has taken me a lot longer today to build than I anticipated. I knew it would, I was kind of, you know, uh, a little bit, uh, what's the word, optimistic this morning when I thought I'd get all these projects done. But, uh, that is almost ready to go now. All we have to do is add the relays when they arrive and then plumb in to the circuit, to the glycol circuit, which is a good thing. So. I'll pick up the camera and we'll go down the workshop and uh, we'll talk about another project that I wanted to touch on today. Let me put the light on and set you down. <laughs> 